The Eagle and the Cat opens with a, a mainland Chinese man living in Singapore. Yeah, and I think some of us, many of us know actually that uh, Pao Kun came from uh, Hepe. Is it Hepe? Mm? Uh, he was born there, he went to Beijing, then he went to Hong Kong, and then he came to Singapore in 1949, the year that I was born. So it seems all oh, very important, you know, somehow it... <laughs> so we have a mainland Chinese man living in Singapore who has just gone to the, Sing the US Embassy in Singapore to ask for a visa. And he not only got refused the visa, he was refused very rudely. So the fellow got really, really fed up and in his temper and all that, because he was very stubborn, he, you know, he turned into a cat. Every time I realized I had gone too wild, I would find myself a corner, away from everyone, squat down and hold my breath. I would hold my breath for as long as I could stand it, then suddenly release it. No matter how upset I was, everything would return to normal. If you don't believe me, you can try it out yourself. One long hold, one sudden release, and you'll be all right, instantly. What is that sound? It's a very muffled, very complex sound. The low register sounds like horses galloping. And the higher register sounds like children crying or yelling. No, no, it isn't from children. Yes, yes it is, it's, it's cats crying and yelling. I am mama, help me. Cats, at least a hundred of them. Black, white, yellow, brown, pure colored ones, mixed colored ones. Some with dots, some with stripes. Male cats, female cats, old cats, young cats, middle-aged cats. Crying and yelling, running for their lives. Suddenly, one of the cats grabbed me and tucked me in the direction they were going. Hey, you stupid cat. Let me go. Let me go. Aya, how come? My hands, my feet, have all gone hairy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so the cat, the, the man, turns into a cat because he's very uh, stubborn and all that. And he naturally gets distressed. I don't think you feel very happy if suddenly you discover that you've turned into a cat. Um, and being all nice and distressed in a, in, in, in a little huddle with this hundreds of cats, cats with dots, with light stripes and don't know what else. Um, he's miserable there and suddenly there is a fat cat that turns up. When I say fat cat, I sort of like mean it more idiomatic because I don't think that cat was fat. Anyway, the cat was very beautiful, very well groomed, even had talcum powder on it and it wore a little collar. And this fat cat comes and he tells the man cat, look, Cool, you know, you'll be all right, get all the food you want to eat if you come and join me and we live on the 65th floor of a hotel. So, you shut up, I put your thinking cap and say, hmm, what's 65th floor? Hmm. And why a hotel, which is a transient, uh, a place of transitional residence, right? So the cat says, look, you come here. Uh, the fat cat says to the man. And the man is dazzled by this beautiful cat and is about to give in, you know, just go to the, just wear the little collar around your neck and boom, you have all the, all the food that you want and you have a, your own bed, your ha own hairbrush, your own everything on the 65th floor of a hotel. And so the man is about to give in when suddenly a big bird appears and takes away the man. Daniel, Daniel, big bird, take me up there. I'll hang on to your claws and you grab me. Take me up in the sky. Let's go. I hung onto the eagle's claws and he stretched out his wings, lunged forward, shooting fast towards a column of light up ahead. As we flew higher and higher, the 
air became colder and colder. Then out of nowhere, a shadow, a net. Before I could make any more sense out of this oncoming shadow, the eagle crashed into it. Instantly, I saw blood dripping down from the top of the eagle's head. Some feather fell off his head, and some feathers fell off his body. The impact was so strong that I was nearly thrown off from his hold, but his hot claws held on tight. The impact made us fall, descending rapidly in the column of the light. But very quickly, the eagle regained his balance, glided for a brief moment, and then he summoned reserve energy, began to flap his wings once more, accelerating and shooting upwards. But again, the shadow, the impact, the blood, the feathers, the fall, the recharge, and the... He kept on repeating it, unrelenting, but it was clear. The net showed no gift, no damage. The sun was fading away, but the net remained, invincible as ever. I knew the eagle would never give up. I lost count how many times the eagle shot up and was then knocked down. I was so cold and fatigued that I became almost unconscious. Please, please stop. Liu De Qing San Zai, Bu Pa Mei Cai Sao. We'll try again another time. Preserve the forest when it's green, and you have timber for firewood. The eagle must have finally learned the wisdom of preservation for he gently flew down to set me on the ground. But I was wrong. The moment I loosened my old hole on his claw, the eagle gave me one intense look, then spread its wing and turns once more to charge single-mindedly into the shaft of light. Up and up and up and up. It was getting dark, but I gathered all my strength and began whistling, calling, Big Bird! Come back, take my hand, I want to go with you. Take my hand, take my hand, hand. I've got my hands back, I've got my feet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jason. So the, the eagle comes, takes the man away, and then the eagle bashes against this net and um, loses all the feathers. And I actually had a very cute picture of the eagle. You know, because I've got an American ball eagle. You know, a cartoon, and going to get bota. I said, no, I cannot. No, very serious seminar. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, when the man gives up, when the man can't hold on to the, cat, uh, to the bird anymore, he turns back into a man. 